Well hi this is Brian um, and this is the initial setup of my outdoor aquaponic system. I've been working on this for about a month now, a month and a half. Um, been thinking about it longer than that and um, finally got it together and running. Um, I still need to cycle it um, and obviously put in grow medium plants and fish but um, in terms of the plumbing and electricity and the system itself um, it's all running now. I'm sure it'll take some tweaks um, over time, but the initial go is, is all ready. Um, so this is a um, shift pist system um, made out of 55 gallon barrels. Um, shift pist stands for constant height in fish tank. Um, this is the fish tank here. Um, and pump in sump tank. And uh, as you can see, this is the, the fish tank. The height is constant. Um, we have water coming in on this pipe right here, coming straight from the pump, and then draining out um, that stand pipe. Um, and you can see the air bubbles from my underwater air stone, um, which is mounted on top of a large um, T. It was uh, it's sold for gutters, um, gutter systems, and it's just a cheaper alternative to the PVC stuff, and it's just a relatively inexpensive way to provide. Um, a hiding place for the smaller fish. Uh, but back to the system as a whole, um, the idea behind shift pist is that you have the pump in a sump that is basically pumping clean, clean water. Um, a lot of the setups that you initially cr see with aquaponics, and this is and the same is true of the one I have indoors, my first setup, is that you have two tanks and the pump is inside the fish tank. Um, now in my indoor setup that's not a big deal, I, my, I don't have a lot of fish and they're not producing a lot of waste, but ultimately you are pumping dirty water with your pump. And um, a shift piss system solves that by essentially providing a third tank uh, with clean water that, that your pump is in. Um, and the advantage behind the, sh the sump as well is that it, it handles all of the change in water level that um, occurs as a result of the ebb and flow um, systems in the grow beds. Um, so this tank down here is the sump and you can see the power cord going in there, the, the uh, pump is inside that and um, the water level tends to fluctuate about as far as you can see um, where, uh, and then there's a good, good foot or so of water that's always left at the bottom so that the pump doesn't um, fail or pump air and it just fluctuates within that range as the grow beds fill and drain. Um, I'll get into a little bit more of the details of that system in a moment. Um, but up here you have two grow beds, again made out of a 55 gallon drum cut in half. Um, you can see the water coming in off of the, the fish tank um, and it's just flowing by gravity out of those tubes. Um, and then we've got the typical um, bell siphon right here. We've got the outer ring here which is um, just meant to keep large stuff out of the siphon. Um, and then inside, I'll go ahead and pull this off. Um, then down in here you've got the uh, larger PVC pipe um, with a cap sealed on there and then a hose here and that is used to break the siphon. Um, so basically right now it's um, sealing the top area of the si inside of the siphon down to the water. But once the water level drops down below that bottom point of the pipe or the hose, um, then the hose will suck air and that'll break the siphon. Um, not all systems have this. Um, if your water, if the drain is fast enough um, compared to the inflow of water, you may not need this. Um, it may just drain fast enough that it sucks enough air when it gets to the bottom to break the siphon, but um, to be safe it's a good idea to have this to make sure that it really does break the siphon. Otherwise you might end up with a tank that's never full. Um, it's just constantly draining out at, at the low level. Um, and then the depth of this tank of course as with any bell siphon is determined by the uh, height of the stand pipe which is a one inch PVC inside of this. Um, I'll go ahead and show that. I won't have anything that's going to get caught in here. Um, so that's the one inch stand pipe. Um, and it's uh, sealed into a one inch 
um, threaded, uh, half threaded, half um, slit fixture there. And um, I've got a hole that I cut in this um, tank. And then I bought some O-rings or gaskets on Amazon that just perfectly fit right in there. Um, I'll show that to you in a better angle. Um, and uh, that's how I'm keeping these things sealed. Uh, let me see if I can show you. Actually, I'll go over here. So this is what I'm doing everywhere I cut through these um, barrels is I'm using a slip to threaded um, adapter here and on the other side, one side is the socket side and the other side is the threaded end um, and then I'm just have them squeezed down tight um, and then I have these o-rings which are sealed which seal it up. Um, I'd never seen that done before. Um, a lot of people use like washers and silicone and stuff like that, but that's kind of a mess. Um, and this is working really well. Um, I don't think any of these gaskets are going to be directly exposed to sunlight, so hopefully they'll last a good while. But um, you know, time will tell if this turns out to be a good long-term solution. But at least right now they're they're working great. Um, I haven't had any leakages whatsoever on any of my um, seal joints, and and I have four of them in the whole system. So. Um, and don't be alarmed by the sweat. This is just because it's a humid day and the water is cold um, compared to the, the air, so it's not leaking or anything. <coughs> um, all right, so um, that's the overall design. A um, few things that are kind of special um, are right here. This right here is a drain. Um, and I designed this as a, to provide an easy way for me to um, basically clean the fish tank. Um, so as you see, the water is coming in through this, this tall pipe um, and it's basically entering the fish tank down there at the bottom and then halfway up where I cut a little slot. Um, and basically, um, so we have the water coming in kind of in the middle of the tank and then it's draining off the top, um, which I'm hoping will allow the bottom to settle. Um, which in this case is a good thing because I don't have a pump down there. If I had my pump in here, settling grime would be a bad thing, but my hope is that this pipe right here, which is just attached to an L down at the bottom, this may not keep focused, but um, it's attached to an L down at the bottom there, and I'm hoping that when I open this guy up um, to drain it, and this is just a you know ball, ball valve, um, drain into a bucket or something, that it'll just suck the fish poop and stuff right off the bottom. Um, now I don't know, I may have to do a lot of draining to really get some good rotation and to really suck up that grime. We'll see how well it works. Um, none of this, these pipes inside here are sealed together so I can just pull it off and play with different configurations or even attach it to maybe something flexible so I can fish around with my hand and, and suck stuff up. But that's basically the idea is this provides me a way to relatively easily um, suck up the solid waste um, and then basically keep that in a bucket which I can then um, use to fertilize other gardens or or whatever so anywho that's um, that's one of the kind of unusual things about the system um, right here you might notice the strain looks a little unusual the reason for this T right here um, basically I didn't want my water to be entering and leaving the tank right at the surface I wanted to make sure I'm circulating well um, and so that's why I have the pipe kind of conveying that water down below. Um, but one advantage of dumping it right into the surface is that it catches a lot of air and you get some additional aeration from that. And I didn't want to lose that advantage, so that's why I put this T on here. Is, um, the water is basically as it would be doing if it was just dumping on the surface. It's dumping right on into this pipe. Um, but by keeping the top open, it can still trap air in as it falls down. And as you can see, it's definitely sucking down a lot of bubbles um, which are escaping down to that first slot. Um, so that's one kind of unique thing. Um, and then one other thing that's unique about the system is I have an all auto fill mechanism. Um, so I'll show this in another video. I'm going to put together a more detailed um, video showing the making of this whole system. Um, I can't really show it to you now because there's no good angle. Um, but there's a toilet fill valve like a ball cock mechanism inside the sump and it's down about a foot off the, off the bottom 
Um, and basically, it's attached to this half inch PVC, which is under pressure. Um, and so, as the water level drops below the, a certain level, that, that uh, valve will activate and fill, um, give it a little burst of tap water into the system. Um, obviously, it's not a good idea to use a lot of tap water. Chlorine and things are not good for the fish, but I'm hoping, you know, a system of this volume, um, a little fill here and there won't, won't, won't be a big deal. Um, another concern I have is that my piping system, so what you're looking at right here, this half inch, is going back underground um, and then coming up over here. And I've got a, a 20 psi pressure limiter on here and then it's just attached to this garden hose and then to my um, hose bib. And the idea here is that I can turn this hose bib on and it'll pressurize that whole system with um, fresh water and then the valve underneath will handle the automatic filling in, of the system. Um, because this system I'm not necessarily using um, like really good <laughs> pipe underground, um, I'm a little worried that the pressure, being under pressure all the time will eventually burst or something or leak at least. So I may not keep it on all the time, but I'll at least turn it on for a day here and there um, to let it fill itself. Um, and then I also attach a little um, hose bib on here so that I can attach another um, hose to this and, and water my garden, which is currently dead. Um, but anyway, that's the idea behind this. So that's a little bit uncommon. Otherwise, this is a pretty standard aquaponic system. Um, in order to keep my electrics and stuff waterproof, I have these uh, bucket bottoms laying around. Um, and so I just strapped underneath. And this one has an air pump. Um, it's a 60 gallon air pump right there. Bought it on Amazon. Um, and then underneath the other one is where all the electric is. So you can actually see it's not, a con it's not like a legit outdoor electrical uh, design or anything. Um, but I'm hoping that this pipe, I'm sorry, this uh, bucket will provide enough shelter to uh, prevent it from getting wet under there. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's how I ended up doing that. Um, and then these are just attached to my structure via zip ties through this plywood. Um, and then it's kind of <laughs> got a Mickey and Mouse kind of hanging scheme right there so that it doesn't droop too much. But um, but that's the system. Um, the uh, got this little hinged lid for it to keep the rain off. Um, obviously, I will be getting some rain into the system unavoidably because my grow beds are exposed. But at least the sump and the grow and the fish tank should be sheltered well. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's the system. Um, one caveat that I will point out um, that I'm that may end up being something I want to resolve is by having both tanks drain into the same pipe right there. You can see this one inch pipe right here is what the, the two bell siphons are attached to. By having one of them, there's actually an issue with the siphon if they're both running at the same time. Um, basically, it'll only handle one siphon operating at once. And so if both of these tanks get to the full level at the same time, whichever activates first will get to drain, but the other one will have to wait. And so I've actually had it happen where this guy almost overflowed before the other one finished draining. And then it siphon activated and it, it went fine. But anyway, that could be a, a problem. Um, I mean, it's not going to be a major issue. It'll ultimately resolve itself. But um, just something I may do differently and something to keep in mind if you design something like this is uh, you might want to avoid sharing the, uh, the drain for the bell siphons. So um, that's the update. Um, I'll, I'll be filling this with red lava rock here that I bought at Lowe's. Uh, I gotta s rinse it nice and good, um, but um, that'll go in there. And once I've cycled everything, then I'll and once it's spring, then I'll get started. Pretty excited. Uh, one question I will ask anybody who's had experience building this type of barrel system. Um, one thing I didn't think about originally, but I'm kind of concerned about, is I use 2x2 two two, um, to hold the barrels. And as you can kind of see, 
they're kind of bowing under the weight. Um, and so there doesn't seem to be any immediate danger of them breaking, but I'm a little bit worried that over time they might eventually split. So if anybody's done this before and you have a concern with using 2x2, two two, let me know. Um, obviously at this point it's going to be a little hard to swap them out, but I will do something if, if uh, there's consensus that these aren't strong enough.